So we're here at the Bermad testing and training facility and we're looking at the Bermad model 720 pressure reducing valve. The purpose of this presentation is to give users and operators uh, a demonstration on exactly what components should be maintained over a relatively short period of time. Those four key things we're going to test is we're going to check the reliability and the functionality of the needle valve. The needle valve being the product that affects the response rate of the valve. We're going to make sure that the inlet and the outlet ports are free from any blockage and we're going to demonstrate how we can check those. We're also going to check the large cartridge filter or the small cartridge filter to ensure that the, the, the filter is clean and free from any debris and keeps it uh, working correctly. And finally, we're going to demonstrate um, how to flush water out of the control chamber to avoid any debris building up inside the pilot itself. So step one of the maintenance, um, we're going to ensure that the needle valve is not blocked. We're going to ensure the needle valve is not worn and I'm going to demonstrate how we check this. So before we do this, the needle valve adjusts the response rate of the valve. It can make a variety of different pressure changes downstream if it's worn. So we're going to demonstrate exactly what we need to do here. Before we maintain the needle valve or do any work on the valve, we have to close the downstream valve to avoid any water traveling into the downstream side of the pipework. So we're assuming now that the downstream valve is closed and what we want to check is we want to see if the needle valve is functioning. So by closing the bonnet isolation valve, the bonnet isolation valve keeps the valve in its last position. So we've now closed the bonnet isolation valve. We're now closing only the downstream ball valve. So what we're doing now is we're exposing upstream water pressure into the valve and we want to check if the needle valve is worn. The first thing we do is we close the needle valve by turning it clockwise completely. Now if a needle valve is not worn, the needle valve should be drip tight closed. So I'm now going to remove the control tube and this needs to be done carefully if there's water pressure in the valve. Safety glasses should be worn if, if you're in concern about that. So here we're removing the control tube on the downstream side of the valve. And we have water pressure right up to the needle valve itself. And because I've closed the needle valve, there is no water venting from the cover. If I am to open the needle valve slowly, I will start to see water starting to pass at a controlled rate. As I continue to open it, the flow will get greater. So this is demonstrating that A, the needle valve is not worn and that it is able to regulate, okay? So we know when we turn the needle valve closed fully that it's seating correctly and it's not worn. What can happen with a needle valve over time with different organic matter? It can build up on the needle itself. So by closing the needle valve fully, we're pushing the needle into the seat and dislodging anything off the seat. We then, um, we can put the control tube back on, which I'm demonstrating now. We tighten up the bolt and reopen the needle valve to the one and a half turns or to the predetermined position that it was in before. And we know now the needle valve is fit for purpose and ready to do its job. That's step one. Now, step two. What we want to check if, there, if the valve is very old or if it does not have stagnation, stagnation tubes fitted to the inlet and outlet side of the valve, we want to ensure that the ports are not blocked. So again, we have the downstream valve closed. There's not going to be any water supply passing into the, uh, the, uh, the network. We're going to close the upstream valve. So we've now eliminated any water pressure coming through the port here. Carefully, we're going to remove the control tube from the top of the valve. Again, this should be done with care. If there's high pressure in the valve, just making sure no water pressure is going to go anywhere. If I open up the upstream ball valve slowly and water passes clearly as we're seeing here, we know the upstream port is not blocked. So we've just identified that there's no blockage in the upstream ports. 
We do exactly the same with the downstream. So we undo the connection on the valve, carefully remove the control tube, open up the ball valve, and water is able to pass without any blockage. So we now know clearly that the up and downstream ports are now completely cleared and the water can flow in and out of the valve carefully. So all we do now is reconnect the control tubes, retighten, reconnect the second tube, and finally open up the inlet ball valve to apply water pressure back into the valve. And that's completed step two, checking inlet and outlet ports of the valve. Step three of maintaining the valve is to actually flush all the water out of the control chamber, which can potentially come up and cause fouling inside the pilot itself. One of the things that we know when a valve operates for extended periods of time is that we can get a buildup of very fine debris that turns into mud, which will sit in the control chamber. It's essential that we clean this out periodically to ensure that that mud under high flow conditions doesn't get lodged inside the pilot. So what do we do to do that? Well, we have the upstream valve opened. We still have the downstream valve closed and the downstream isolation is still shut. So water is not traveling anywhere. So now we open the bonnet isolation valve and we allow water now to flow onto the cover of the valve. By opening the, the normally closed blue handled ball valve on the cover, we are now starting to drain water or flush water through the whole control chamber. Now typically, I'll just stop this for a second. Typically when we're flushing this control chamber, we'll see the water is very clean, but then after a short period of time, you'll find it will go quite dirty and that's flushing all the dirty water out of the control chamber. So make sure that you flush the control chamber thoroughly to get all the water off, the, the dirty water off the chamber itself. One of the things that we were doing when we opened the flushing valve was that we were allowing water to flow onto the cover of the valve and off the cover of the valve at the same time. Because this water is flowing, it's identified that the port on the bonnet of the valve is not blocked. And that's critical because if that blocks, we stop the operation of the valve. Here we can clearly see water is able to enter and leave the chamber correctly. So we know that we've flushed all of the dirty water out of the chamber and the port inside the bonnet is clear. So this is step four of the maintenance of the Bermad PRV and probably one of the most critical aspects. The filter on the pressure reducing valve has a primary function to ensure that we keep debris and dirt away from the needle valve, dirt out of the pilot, and ensure that the valve operates. A two-way 720 pressure reducing valve has water constantly passing through this cartridge filter, constantly passing through the control loop when the valve is in operation and water is flowing. So if the filter were to block, the problem with the valve is the valve cannot close and if the valve cannot close, we'll get over pressure conditions on the downstream side of the valve. So I'm now going to demonstrate how we maintain the filter after we've done the last three stages. First thing is we isolate the upstream water pressure by closing the ball valve on the inlet side. I've now isolated water coming into the filter. I now freeze the water on the control chamber by closing the isolating valve on the cover. The downstream ball valve is already closed. So what I'm going to do now is relax the water pressure from the filter, take away any water pressure inside the filter itself. So as I remove this control tube, this should always be done carefully. Oh, just like that. I then undo the, the nut on the control filter. As I remove the control filter, I simply pull the cartridge off the bottom. Here we are. 
I remove the cover from the valve and expose the disc element. Now the disc element has water flowing from the outside of the disc to the inside of the disc. So we undo the disc slowly by hand by relaxing the discs and separating the discs themselves. Carefully, if I open the inlet ball valve, I can expose water pressure and I can clean the disc until the discs are clean. Then finger tight, I simply tighten the discs, not over tight, just enough tight just to bring them back together. I insert this back into the lower housing of the valve. Put the cartridge over the top, the housing I should say. Nut. Push back into the valve body, making sure it's properly aligned. Retighten. This doesn't have to be over tightened, just a bit more than hand tight is more than sufficient. Now I want to remove any air that's in the control chamber here, so I just slowly and carefully open the inlet ball valve until water starts to come out through the control tube. Then I know I've vented all of the air out of the filter itself. So I'll take a few seconds. There it goes. Isolate the ball valve again. Put the control tube on. Now when I put the control tube on, I still have an airlock in this top section of the valve which I want to remove. So I open up the inlet ball valve now. And that's now running water through the filter, up through the needle valve and onto the control chamber. If I open the isolating valve here and slowly purge the bypass flush valve, I can get rid of any air out of that control line and I'm back and ready for operation. So that is the effective way in which we, we clean the cartridge filter, making it fit for purpose to put it back online. And this is the most critical part of the pressure reducing valve. So we've now finished step four of the cleaning of the filter and we've been through all the four steps, which is the regular maintenance on the valve. This section now is critical to ensure that we do not overpressurize the main because now we're going to put the valve back online and it's very important that we put the valve online in a careful controlled manner. Up to this date we've had the downstream isolation valve closed the whole time. We've also had the downstream tap closed the whole time and the purpose of this tap is to keep the valve closed. So what we're we going to do now We've checked that we've got the inlet valve opened. We've checked that we've got the bonnet isolation valve opened. I'm going to double check the needle valve that it was opened one and a half turns. So I fully turned it clockwise and I'm going to back it off one turn, half a turn, one turn, one and a half turns. So I've got my isolation open, open. I've checked my needle valve. I've made sure that my normally closed flush valve is closed. And I'm now going to open the downstream valve slowly. As I start to open the valve slowly, water will then start to travel through the valve and the valve will start to open. So it's very important that we open this valve as I'm demonstrating at the moment. We're opening it very slowly. Now, typically I would suggest to do this over 10 to 15 seconds or as slow as you like. You can take it to a small level, let the valve settle and then continue to open and open gradually until it's fully opened. So now we have a condition where we have high pressure and we have uh, some lower pressure downstream. Now that lower pressure might be slightly higher. So the critical point now is when we open our isolation valve on the downstream side, we want to do this slowly. We want to do this slowly so that we introduce water back into the water main at a slow gradual rate and avoid any surging. So we open up the downstream gate, butterfly or whatever the isolation valve is, nice and slowly and we're back in operation. So 
What we've demonstrated is a four-step process of how to maintain the key aspects of the control valve, which you need to be doing on an annual basis, approximately. It's, it's very much dependent on the water quality and the amount of use that the valve actually has, but every year is a good rule of thumb. The bottom line is, is the purpose of this video is to ensure operators that you can, I'm demonstrating these components. If you're in any doubt, contact your local sales office for assistance or go to the website bermad.com.au